All right, so um, we're going to try to clarify and explain Punnett squares a little bit better today. Uh, so there's some terms you need to know. Uh, we're going to you're going to be looking at a test here coming up that has a lot of word problems to them. So you need to understand the words that you're going to be reading on the test. So uh, the first word is purebred. So when we're talking about a purebred, we're looking at the allele combination. And remember, the alleles are the letters. So we'll write there, that at the end here. Allele is the letter combination. The letter combination in the gene. So remember, each gene has two alleles, and each parent has the option of giving one of those alleles to the offspring. And so the allele combination is what we're looking at when we're talking about purebred and hybrid. So for a purebred, uh, there could be two different types. Uh, we're going to use the capital or the, the letter T today uh, just to keep things easy and it's easy to write capital T's and lowercase T's. So for to be a purebred, there's two options, capital T, capital T, or capital T, uh, excuse me. The other purebred is lowercase T, lowercase T. All right. So though anytime you see that allele combination, you know that that organism is purebred for that trait. Remember the traits are what the alleles are, are coding for. When we have a hybrid, hybrid means like a, a combination of a couple different things. And in this case, the only hybrid we have is a capital T or a lowercase t. So those are all the genotypes, um, genotypes being the letter combinations of the trait that we're looking at in the word problem. When it comes to dominant and recessive, the dominant trait always shows, all, if I can spell correctly today, always show in the phenotype. Okay? Remember, genotype, the letters, the phenotype, it's like pH, like photograph, it's what, if I look at someone, I can describe something whatever organism it is, I can describe their features, that's phenotype. So it's the things that you can see and describe. So dominant always shows. So anytime you see a, gene, a gene combination or allele combination that has a capital letter in it, whatever that capital letter code for, codes for is the phenotype that's gonna show up in the offspring. And the recessive trait is hidden. Hidden by the dominant. trait. And to get the recessive trait, the only way you can get that is to only have two lowercase letters. So in this case, lowercase t, lowercase t. Heterozygous, hetero, the prefix hetero, means different. So when you have a heterozygous organisms, organism, the genotypes for hetero, uh, heterozygous would be a capital letter and a lowercase letter. And since we're using the letter T, in this case, it's gonna be capital T, lowercase T for heterozygous, because those two letters are different. So if I look at capital T, capital T, well, those two letters are exactly the same. Same with lowercase T, lowercase T. Those two letters are exactly the same. So when they're the same, they're homozygous. And so the genotype would be capital, capital, or lowercase, lowercase. Remember, genotypes, letters, and so the phenotypes, it's what these code for. So if it's, it's height, it could be skin color, it could be flippy floppy earlobes, widow's peak, dimple chin, you name it. All the traits that you see in a person, all the physical traits, uh, uh, how tall they are, the color of their hair, eye color, uh, all those things are determined by the allele combinations that they get from their parents. So now I want to, I'm gonna pick a random question from the SpongeBob activity, and we're gonna go through that. So I'm gonna slide this over a little bit. Turn that middle set of lights off. Hopefully you'll be able to see this okay. 
So question six on SpongeBob, it said, everyone in uh, Squidward's family has light blue skin. Now let's do a different one. Do, 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 do. Let's do number four. Uh, SpongeBob SquarePants recently met Sponge Susie Round Pants at a dance. SpongeBob, so we'll use uh, SpongeBob. is heterozygous. For his square shape. So if we go back to our words, heterozygous means that he's got, that means different. So a capital letter and a lowercase letter. And in this case, for uh, shape, they're using the letter S. So for SpongeBob to be heterozygous for his square shape, he would be capital S, lowercase s. And then it says Sponge Susie is round. Well, square shape is dominant to round. So the only way to get the, that his girlfriend or future wife is uh, uh, square, uh, excuse me, round shape, she has to have both recessive alleles, which means uh, sponge, her name is Sponge Susie. And she is homozygous for her recessive trait, which means she is lowercase s, lowercase s. So now we know the exact combination of the two parents. And it says, create a Punnett square to show the possibilities that would result if SpongeBob and Sponge Susie had children. Create a Punnett square, super simple four-sided, four-box Punnett square. So SpongeBob is capital S, lowercase s. We'll just label this SpongeBob. Sponge Susie, just SS there. She's going to be lowercase s, lowercase s. Now, as a, as a good rule of thumb, if you're using letters that look very similar, whether they're a, a uppercase or lowercase, exaggerate the size. So in this case, I have, I've, I've drawn a really large capital S for SpongeBob, and then next to them, a really small s. And then Sponge Susie has two small s's. So let's do our Punnett square, remember, uh, when you create your Punnett square, one letter goes above these boxes, one letter above these, and one to the sides. And what you're going to do, it's kind of like a multiplication table, or two times two is equal to four. You follow the, the, the boxes over and where they connect. So this S is going to be brought down into both of these boxes, capital S, capital S. This lowercase s is going to be brought down to these two boxes, lowercase s, lowercase s. Now on, for Susie, she can give one of these, and in this case, this lowercase s comes over here and over here. And same with this one, it just is drawn straight across. So as you can see, in our F1 generation, this is the first generation of SpongeBob and Sponge Susie, they have children, two children have capital S lowercase s. And if we remember that from our earlier traits, capital S, lowercase s is a hybrid. It is um, heterozygous. And it is also dominant. Because when you see the capital S in these two, those kids are going to have square pants because the square pants is dominant to round pants. On these two children, they both have lowercase s's, so lowercase s, lowercase s. We know those are homozygous. They are purebred. And they are recessive. So those three terms in each one of these describes the capital uh, S and the lowercase s and the lowercase lowercase s. Now, as far as the probabilities, when we look at this, 
we have four boxes. So each one of these box represents one quarter of the total of all the offspring. So if the question was, uh, how many of the offspring, give me the percentage probability of the offspring with the dominant trait of round pants, you would see that two of the boxes have uh, capital S's in them. So two out of four um, is dominant. Well, two-fourths is also equal to 50%. So now I have my fraction probability and I have my uh, percentage probability. Now, if I did that for the recessive trait, I would also have two-fourths because these two boxes, there's no capital letter, so they're going to be the recessive trait. So two-fourths again is equal to 50%. Now here's one spot where I would not recommend breaking that two-fourths down into one-half. You could, but sometimes it gets confusing because you have four offspring, one, two, three, and four. So when you're talking about a fraction, you need to represent all four. If you say one half, that indicates there was only two offspring. So in this case, you leave it whole like this as two fourths rather than uh, uh, rounding it down or, or breaking it down into one half. Other examples of some Punnett squares, when you have hybrids, so I'm going to just make up a Punnett square with hybrids as the parents. Remember, your P generation, P stands for parental, so your P generation is always on the outside. The F1 generation is on the inside. Those are the offspring. This is the P generation. But in some cases, SpongeBob, maybe we didn't know if Sponge Susie uh, maybe she had square pants, but we didn't know if she was heterozygous or homozygous. So uh, we put her to do a test, draw her upon it square. SpongeBob being capital S lowercase s. We're going to give Sponge Susie capital S lowercase s. Now, would she be round pants or square pants? Well, if you're looking at the letter combination, I have a capital letter in her allele combination, so she would have to be square pants because square is dominant to round pants. And so this capital S here would indicate that she has uh, square pants just like SpongeBob. Now they're kids. Let's see what would happen to their kids. We'll say SpongeBob and Sponge Susie. So we do our combinations. The capital S comes down, capital S comes down, lowercase s comes down, lowercase s comes down, capital S goes across. Capital S, capital S, and then lowercase goes across, lowercase, lowercase. So now if we look at our children, we can see three of the boxes have capital letters in them. So our dominant trait, in this case the square pants, would be three out of the four children have a capital S in, their, in the box. So that means three out of four would have square pants. And which would equate to 75%. For the recessive trait, only one box has two lowercase s's. So that's only one out of four, which is equal to 25%. So there's a couple examples. There's the terms that you really need to know for uh, uh, seventh grade genetics. And there's a couple examples on how to do the Punnett squares. Um, always remember that your parent generation, your P generation always is on the outside. Your children are always on the inside. So that would be the F1 generation. And in some cases, we'll take some of these offspring, some of the uh, uh, F1 generation offspring, and we'll cross those into another. And then those parents would then make the F2 generation. So we've touched a little bit about that this year, uh, this year too. So uh, watch this. Watch it again, watch it again until this becomes very familiar to you uh, and, the, and you'll do well in seventh grade genetics.